Greetings, everyone. Welcome back, I suppose, from spring break. I uh, hope all is going well where you are. Everybody staying safe. This is the first of what should be quite a long series of lecture videos covering the material from the rest of the semester. Uh, it's going to be broken down a little bit more than normal, so we're going to have smaller bits and but still try and cover pretty much all the stuff that we would normally have covered. Our first topic today is non-homogeneous linear systems and the method of undetermined coefficients. So basically what we would like to do is solve a non-homogeneous system. We've been dealing with linear homogeneous systems, so just this first part of the equation here without the g of t. Uh, but now we need to deal with that. Luckily, most of the methods that we've developed before still work here. And after we've dealt with undetermined coefficients in today, in this video, we'll be dealing with the variation of parameters method in a separate video. And the other lucky thing is that all of our all of our theory from higher order linear systems works here as well. We worked through that before and found that we could make a general solution for a non-homogeneous equation by first finding a general solution of the homogeneous equation, which we call the complementary solution. And then in addition to that general solution, we need one particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation. So the homogeneous equation, right, again, is this one here, y prime equals p of t, y of t. And when that's a constant matrix, we can just use our eigenvalue methods to find the complementary solution. And we'll see an example of that in just a second. The question then becomes, how do we find the particular solution? And that's, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So let's get started. I think the best way to, to think about the method of undetermined coefficients is by looking at an example. So here we go. Uh, let's take this example. We have y prime of t equals 0, 4, 1, 0, y of t plus g of t. I'm not specifying what the g of t is right now. That's okay, because the first step that we have to go through is figuring out what the complementary solution would be, and we do that by solving the eigenvalue problem. So let's take a look at that. So the eigenvalue problem, we know we're going to be looking for eigenvalues of this matrix, 0, 4, 1, 0. So we're going to set 0 equal to the determinant of that matrix, but with lambda subtracted down the diagonal. So we get 0 minus lambda, 0 minus lambda, and our 4 and 1 are the same. So this is pretty straightforward. We get lambda squared minus 4, and that can be factored as lambda plus 2 and lambda minus 2. So we get that our eigenvalues are lambda is either equal to minus 2 or 2 or minus 2. All right, with each of those eigenvalues, we need to find a corresponding eigenvector. So let's begin with lambda equals 2. So we're looking for a vector for which a minus lambda i, so minus 2, 4, 1, minus 2, times v1, v2 is equal to 0, 0. Uh, I think we've got enough practice at this point that we can go pretty much straight to what this is going to be. If we select 2, 1, then that will get the job done. Okay, so that's that. Then we do the same thing for lambda equals minus 2. Now our matrix will be 2, 4, uh, 1, 2, because we're subtracting negative 2 from the diagonal, times v1, v2 equals 0, 0. And from there, again, we can see pretty quickly that for example, 2 minus 1 would work. And that's all that we need in order to form our complementary solution. So now we know that yc is equal to c1 e to the 2t times 2, 1 plus c2 e to the minus 2t times 2 minus 1. Right. So complementary solution obtained, that is half the battle in some sense for finding solution to a non-homogeneous linear equation. All right, from there, now we need to deal with g of t, which again, I haven't specified. So here I have written down what our 
what our complementary solution was. So that's the same thing. C1e to the 2t, 2, 1, plus C2e to the minus 2t, 2, 2, minus 1. And let's just imagine that the right-hand side, the g of t that we had there, had all of these various forms. And let's try and figure out what we would need to choose for the right-hand side, or for our guess, for the particular solution in each of these cases. Right, so, okay. So if the g of t in our differential equation had been the vector 1, 7, well, that's a constant vector. So our selection for yp would then be a constant vector, right? And just keeping in mind that a constant vector would have two components, since this is a two by two system. So really, although it's just one constant vector, that means two undetermined coefficients. Right? Now, what if instead our g of t was equal to t1? Right? This can be a little bit confusing, but let's, uh, let's try breaking that down a little bit it's usually useful to write, rewrite these vectors as constant vectors times things if we can. So we could, for example, write this down as 1, 0 times t plus 0, 1 times nothing, times a constant. So that makes it pretty clear that this is like a polynomial, right? A constant vector times t plus a constant vector. And so we would want something like a polynomial for our yp. Oh, let me put my arrow up there. So for yp in this case, I would choose something along the lines of a times t plus b. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. You don't have to break it down like I did in the black ink there, but it's sometimes helpful just for envisioning things. All right, similarly, g of t, if g of t is 2t squared plus 1 and then 0, then what would our complementary solution be? Well, it would be a second degree polynomial, but with vector coefficients. So then we would have a t squared plus b t plus c. All right. Uh, but of course, not everything is a polynomial. We have to deal with non-polynomial situations as well. So what if we have e to the t, 3e to the t? Well, luckily in this case, each each component has e to the t uh, the same. It's not different exponents there. So we can treat this as a constant vector times e to the t. And you can probably guess what our solution would look like. It would look like uh, constant vector b times e to the t. I'm not entirely sure why I picked b there. Let's be consistent. Let's make that a times e to the t. Okay, if we have a sine or cosine in our right-hand side, then we can deal with that as well. We'll recall from our previous work that that would mean we would need something with the sine and then also the corresponding cosine, as these things need to be able to be present so that everything can cancel out. So in this case, we would go with yp equals uh, a, vector a, times cosine 2t. Let's try that again cosine 2t plus b times sine 2t. All right, so hopefully this is uh, pretty understandable. Shouldn't be any big surprises going on here. Now this last one, if you just look at that, that last one there, it's a little bit confusing. There's all kinds of different parts. So g of t equals t squared plus 3t, right? t squared plus 3e to the t, and then the second component is 2e to the 3t. So we have something polynomial, we have an exponent, and we have another exponent with a different uh, coefficient on it. And again, we want to break this down. So we can write this as 1, 0 times t squared plus 3 times e to the t plus, sorry, 3, 0 times e to the t plus 0, 2 times e to the 3t. These are three separate components. Now, now is the time when it's a good idea to remember that back when we were doing these before, we developed a rule that said that if you have different things added together like this that seem of separate types, it's okay to solve and find a particular solution that will deal with each one individually. So let's find a particular solution that works for the t squared part, another one that works for the e to the t, and another one that works for e to the 3t. So we would actually have three particular solutions to work out this time. We would have a first one, y 
one, which would deal with the t squared. So that would have to be a polynomial of degree t. So a t squared plus b t plus c. Okay, and then for the for the first exponential, we would have to have another particular solution. Let's call it y p two. And what would that look like? Well, that would have to be a constant vector. Well, a, b, and c are already taken, so it's going to be a vector d times e to the t. And then finally, for the second exponential, we'll need yet another particular solution, and it would be some constant times e to the 3t. And I certainly don't want to choose e or f or g here. I'm, I'm just going to jump all the way up and call this w e to the 3t. So hopefully that makes sense, what we're up to there. We would then take each of these things for a particular problem. We would take our conjectured solution and plug it into the differential equation. And then we would have some vectors to figure out. We would have to figure out what vector A would make that thing into a solution, or A and B, or A, B, and C. And you can see that the number of coefficients gets pretty large pretty quickly. For this last one, we would have for each of these vectors that I've put in, each of these constants, so for A, B, C, D, and W, each of those is two components. So that's 10 unknown coefficients to solve that problem completely. Not, uh, not super easy. And then once you have that, but anyway, once we have the complementary or the particular solution, we just add it to the complementary solution and we've got ourselves a general solution for the non-homogeneous system. And then if we had an initial value problem, we would have to plug in the initial value in order to figure out C1 and C2. So an example of that would be something like this. This is exercise 4.8.3 from the textbook. So we have, again, a linear non-homogeneous system. We can find the complementary solution, construct a particular solution of this form. This is the same kind of thing we were just talking about. And then find A and then solve from the general solution, figure out the, the unique solution of the initial value problem. That I'm not going to do in this video. That's covered in a separate video that you can, you can find in the stream. And uh, yeah, so that does it for this. If you have any questions, uh, do get in touch uh, via the various methods that we have. The notes for this, so the PDF of, of what I've written here and the template will be posted on the Canvas page, as will a more complete version of the lecture notes for you to take a look at. All right, see you.